So, how long is that kilt of yours anyway? It's KT with Everyday KT number 31. And today we're talking about, you guessed it, kilts. How long is your kilt? So, when you measure a traditional style kilt, like the one I'm wearing here, top of the kilt generally falls right around the navel, your belly button. Now, how far down your kilt goes, that's up to significant conjecture. Normally, and when I say normally, I'm talking with traditional kilt makers, what they would suggest is that you measure from your navel to the center of your knee. That's how long your kilt would be. Uh, now, that's for a majority of the traditional kilt makers that are out there in Scotland, here in the U.S. They're all, that's generally what they recommend. It's about that long. Now, if you're only wearing your kilt to wedding, um, say a special event, something where you're not really moving around a whole lot or you're not doing a whole lot, that's fine. You know, you can have it that long. But if you're wearing your kilt all the time like I am, that is a little bit long. And if you look at some historic pictures from World War I, you'll see that the soldiers all had their kilts at the top of the knee, maybe a little bit shorter. There's a very good reason for that. Uh, I'm an avid hiker and Boy Scout, and I'm always walking around in my kilt. So what happens is, is if I have one or two kilts where they are long like that, it actually will rub against the back of your knee. And if any of you out there have walked around a long time with a kilt, and it's been a little long like that, you'll know that that will rub the crap out of the back of your knee. It'll rub it raw. And especially if it's raining outside, it will suck horribly. So I suggest that if you're getting a kilt of any type and you are fairly active, you walk around a lot, you wear it every single day, get them a little bit shorter. You know, top of the knee so that when you pick your knee up, like your leg up like this, it might hit the top of your calf, but it's not hitting anything else. And the only reason it's hitting your calf it's because of how you pick your leg up. Most people don't walk with their legs going that high. Hi, Angela. Um, you want to keep them at about the top of the knee. And what that does is that prevents some really bad pain on your back of your legs. Uh, when it rains, it's like sandpaper just crushing away at the back of your leg. It sucks horribly bad. Now, for those people who wear modern style kilts, like a utility kilt or something like that, those are usually measured from the jeans waist, which is a little bit lower than the traditional kilt. Um, same thing applies, though. You want to make sure that if you're active in your kilt and you're wearing it a lot, they're just above the top of the knee when you're standing. That way, they won't tear up the back of your legs. Now, there are, and, and you'll see this a lot, and wetting the whistle a little bit here, You will hear lots of people claiming that it has to be mid-knee or else. There's lots of jokes about that where, you know, anything above the knee, you're a boy. At the knee, you're a man. And below the knee, you're a liar. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but it's impractical. Uh, I, you know, I'm all for wearing a kilt, the quote-unquote traditional means. But if that's the truth, then... There, you need to take a look at a lot of historic pictures, especially, like I said, World War I. The, the Scots had their kilts just above the knee. It's very similar to this one. Um, and like I said, it's all just basic practicality. Uh, now we've got a couple of people watching. Uh, can somebody grab a version of Kiltology for me and uh, for tonight's reading? So for those of you who have experienced problems with people telling you that your kilt is too short, your kilt is too long, your kilt is too whatever. I, I will reiterate the same thing I said last night and for a vast majority of my videos. Just ignore it. You know, odds are you're reading it on the internet and whoever is saying that is saying that from the privacy and protection of behind their laptop or behind their computer screen or phone far, far away. In all of my years, I've had exactly one person tell me to my face that I was doing something wrong. 
and he was completely right, and he was a good friend of mine. So that was it, once. N never have I had someone come up and give me crap about my, my kilt being too short, or the fact that I'm wearing Converse Chucks and a kilt and a t-shirt was improper. To your face, never happens. Uh, you know, the internet offers a vast amount of safety in that you can say whatever you want, throw it out on the internet, and nobody can do anything about it. But anyone who's seen Jane Silent Bob Strike Back knows you get somebody with enough money and enough resources, and they'll just sit there and go down all the, all the list, and they might knock on your door. It probably won't happen, but, you know, like I said, Jane Silent Bob's a funny movie. Um, so that's, that's the thing with kilt length. You know, traditional ones start at your navel, and they go to roughly the top of your knee. Um, most kilt tailors would suggest the middle of the knee, but I don't suggest that unless you're not really wearing that particular kilt very often. Um, also, it's for a bespoke kilt, which means it's custom made for you specifically. Odds are it's going to be one of the more expensive kilts, so you're probably not going to wear that one a whole lot as it is. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, it does feel a little bit odd when um, when you're wearing a kilt. You know, the first few times when it's just above the knee. But think of it this way: it's either you wear it above a little bit above the knee, or you basically have a rasp at the top of your calves, just going constantly, just rubbing, rubbing, and then it gets raw, and you can get blisters. And it just it sucks. Um, so nobody said anything about kiltology today. So I'm just gonna randomly grab a grab one. And we're going to go with, boom, volume one, after some scotch, because scotch, scotch, scotch. And if you hear anything noise in the background, it's my kids are watching Minecraft videos. Apparently, there's these two people who do amazing Minecraft videos where they talk with the, with the video as they're playing. It's pretty cool, I guess. So, Catology. <laughs> So, as I've always said, it's always good to have a bit of humor when you're dealing with people who are talking about your kilt. And this one is perfect. Kiltology number 65 out of volume 1. A few days ago, a guy walked up to me and said, Holy crap, you're wearing a kilt! I said, Holy crap, your ass is on fire! And walked away. So, plain and simple, if, if, if people are going to mess with you, mess with them right back. You know, it's it fun. Either they be embarrassed or they get a good laugh out of it. And who knows? Might actually meet somebody that has a good time. So I do apologize. Uh, today we we're supposed to show you how to do Facebook videos, but I ran into some technical glitches. Apparently, uh, tablets and phones don't like taking videos of each other while they're taking videos at the same time of the same thing. Uh, some kind of timey-wimey thing. I, I don't know. Uh, I didn't want to collapse the space-time continuum, so I didn't do it. Um, tomorrow, it's going to be interesting. Not only is tomorrow the 10th anniversary of the Brotherhood of the Kilt, which is both this thing here and this thing here, depending on which way you're looking at it. So we're going to do some shenanigans with that. And we're also expecting a foot of snow all day. So, we may have live videos throughout the day. God only knows what I'm going to do. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. I will talk to you then. Be strong. Put a kilt on.